Hey guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Have an epic song for you guys today. We're going to do all of Pull Me Under by Dream Theater and the great John Petrucci. So you're going to be with me for a while here. I apologize. But we're going to go through this whole thing. It is a beast. There's a lot going on. We're in standard tuning. Um, we're just going to jump right into it. Please go, if you're not subscribed to the channel already, please do. And I'll also ring that little notification bell so I'll let you know when I release uh, a new video, which is quite often. And uh, please check out my Guitar Academy. It's the GL365 Academy. It contains all my guitar courses. It's at guitarlessons365.com, and you can find out all the information about it. Um, got, you know, very appreciative of the thousands of people who have already uh, signed up for it. Uh, we've got a great community going over there. So hopefully uh, you will join if you haven't already. All right, so let's start here with this intro. Um, we're going to start with a kind of a clean, chorusy type sound. And we have this. All right, so we're going to have the low E open. 7th fret on the D, and then the open G. And when you do that, let them all ring together and just, just a slight little vibrato bar there. So. And then we're going to kind of continue that same pattern. It's going to move now down to the 4th fret on the D, but everything else will be the same. All right, now we're going to move uh, that finger over to the fourth fret on the A string. So now I'm going to pick the low E, that A string, and then the open G. And then just move that finger down one fret. And then we're, the first ending, we're going to have the open D, then the second fret on the G, open B. So, so far we have this. Then we start over with the same thing. Except right here, instead of doing the open D, as the lowest note in this little ending. The second ending uses the first fret there, the F there the, on the low E, first fret on the low E. And then the other two notes are the same. So that second fret on the G, open B. So that's kind of, that's just the second ending. And then he goes through all of that again uh, with the exact same thing. Oh, as the band starts kind of building in. Um, so he goes through that whole section that I just played um, with the first and second endings. He goes through it twice. And then he uh, does a little variation on it, so you're not going to do the vibrato in a bar, bar anymore. It's just going to be this. So it's the same notes in the left hand. So we're just going to change the picking pattern. We're going to have this, this, the same, the first three notes. But then you're going to pick the low E, high E, and the open B. So this. So now it's a six note pattern. And then do the same thing. And then right here we go back to the old pattern. And then we go back. Now they continue that in the with the big uh, power chords that come in here. So live, he just kind of jumps to the power chords usually. Um, so that power chord kind of looks like this. So it sounds like he's got a little quick hammer on there. 
You can decide to do it or not. He doesn't, I don't really see him do that live, but when you listen to it, it, do, it sounds like there's a, a quick, a quick uh, little hammer on in there. In any case, the power chord is a low E open, seventh fret on the A, ninth on the D and the G. And what I'm doing with a hammer on, I'm like, you can kind of just, kind of, if you want, just play the two outside notes and hammer on that middle note. Then you pick it down to third fret, and then back to five a couple times, and then start again. Then down to three again. But this time, you're going to end it there at the first fret of the low E power chord. All right, then we get to the main riff of the song. It's a killer riff. Here it sounds like this. All right, uh, now you're gonna probably see this riff played a few different ways. Um, I'm doing it as it was originally recorded and it is actually played live by Pertucci and the way he's even said it in many interviews how he actually plays it. Most people play the, like this, kind of the full bottom of the power chord, which he's not actually doing. So what he's doing is this, starts with a low E there, and then we're going to go into just the 7th fret on the A and the D string. You're not going to play the root note down here. Like that. You're going to go. So he has this. And he slides it down to the 5th fret. And then kind of hitting that low E again. So we have this. So that little one, two, three, and then you'll have an uh, kind of an accented hit that's not muted. So with this. So we start the rhythm again, and then the second little rip is playing those two notes again, but this at the fourth fret now, fourth on the A and the D, sliding it up to the fifth. So with this. Now the third little chord move is, now here is the fourth fret on the A and the sixth fret on the D. Play those together and then move up to the fifth fret for both the A and the D. And then we're gonna end it with this. We have this, um, well it's basically a B power chord here. So it's a, uh, the power chord off the fifth fret of the A string. So it's the fifth fret of the A and the fourth fret, I'm sorry, fifth fret of the A, second fret of the A, fourth fret of the D. But you're gonna add the fifth of the chord in the bass. So you're basically gonna bar the second finger across the uh, A and the low E. And then slide it up to three. Couple low E opens, and then take that same chord shape and play it in the fifth fret, so like this. Start over. So it's the same except that last chord is just the regular F power chord of the first fret of the low E. And then it's the same riff except a little bit different rhythm. That da, da, down, 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 up. Oh, Same thing. All right, so I could explain that rhythm in depth, but it's pretty simple. And if you're you're even attempting this song, you probably don't need me to do that for you. All right, and then we go to just kind of a muted low E power. 
it's mostly just kind of muted, but if you hear any note, it's the low E uh, power chord. So just grab a low E power chord and kind of really mute it and just, just really lay your palm down. Down up, down up. All right, and then we get to the verse, which is a really cool verse, um, but it, which is also weird because all the verses are different. So here's the first one. All right, so that has got an interesting uh, kind of feel to it. We're gonna start here with this chord shape, which seventh fret on the uh, A, ninth on the D, and 11 on the G. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit it with a down up, and then quickly jump down to the low E string and do a down up there as well. Um, the way he plays it is just down up, down up, down up. He doesn't go down, up, down, down. He doesn't do like the kind of head feel thing. He, uh, when you see him play it live, he just kind of, he's just doing, just all alternate picking it. So he has this, and then the down, up there on the low E. So you're always gonna hit that little low E there. So it just kind of go back and forth between the chords that you're playing and that low E. So either. All right, so then the second chord is the ninth fret. This one's pretty dissonant. Ninth on the um, A string, 10 on the D, 12 on the G. So that keeps going back to that low E as well. So we have this. All right, then we're gonna do uh, the chord here, the ninth fret on the D and the G, and the 10th fret on the B. Chord's not that hard, it's just you have a bigger jump to get back to that low E now. Then move up here, 10th fret on the D, 12 on the G, 13 on the B. So you just do it a couple of times there, that riff. And then just move on, uh, you're gonna change the chord down to the 11th fret on the G, everything else is the same. So those two are twice as long, I mean half as long. So we have this. Then you start over, the same chords. Except now this last chord is said, going to that, you jump down to the 8th fret there on the A, 10th on the D, 12 on the G. So it goes. All right, so then we get to the pre-chorus. Um, now there's a lot of overdubs going on with this. So what I'm kind of doing, he's played it live a little bit differently um, over the years, over the decades, but I, I'm kind of putting together uh, more of what he plays live most of the time. Instead of doing all the tiny little overdubs and little clean guitar stuff well, along with the chords, uh, I'm really just kind of taking it, he kind of puts it all together live. So that's what we're doing here. So it looks like this. All right, so it kind of moves around quite a bit, but he's getting all those little intricate things in there as well. So we're gonna start with this big E power chord. Just low E, just the power chord here with all the open strings around it. And then we go to this chord. The Alex Lifeson chord. So we're gonna have um, full bar at the third fret, and then you're gonna play the fifth fret on the D and the fifth fret on the G. So he strums across this a couple times and then kind of picks across the, kind of 
picks the D string, and then I, E, B, and then down to the D. So it is. And then move that up one fret. Now this is kind of a cool little fill. Strum the chord and then play fourth on the, I'm sorry, sixth fret on the D. And then the high E string. Then play the fifth fret there on the B. You can still keep the chord in your, in your hand. And then do a, lift up that note and do a hammer pull uh, um, from four to five on that B. Over to six on the G. So you have to, from that chord. All right, and then he goes down to this, the G power chord, the open version of it. So you'll, that's just the, uh, without the B. So we just have the third fret on the B and the high E, uh, and this third fret on the low E, and you're muting out the A string. To the B power chord, the second fret off the A string. So, so far away this. All right, and then instead of going through the chords the exact same way, he has this little melody in there that he likes to do live, and it looks like this. So the ending was different, it was the same, I'm sorry, but the, the beginning is different. So he's playing this chord. So he picks the low E, seventh fret on the A, Ninth fret on the D, 11th fret on the G. And then hit the whole chord, then move up to the 12th fret on the G, then back down to 11. Then he goes to this, which is the full bar at the uh, 8th fret. Then you play the 10 on the A, 12 on the D, and 11 on the G. And he kind of picks across it. And that melody is within the chord, so you don't have to really do move around at all. Just pick across from the sixth all the way to the second string. Then back to the G. So this. There's a little pause there, so this. And then we're back to the same. All right, and then we get to the keyboard interlude, and uh, underneath that, um, Petrucci's doing his best uh, James Hetfield impression. So it looks like this. All right, so straight palm muting, fast downstrokes here. Uh, you can, if you want to cheat it. Uh, he mostly tries to do it with downstrokes live, but I've seen him just kind of relax a little bit and, and do it with some alternate picking a little bit, or he'll do the very ending with alternate picking and then kind of just chill out. So we have the low E power chord. And then that chord that we had um, in the main riff there, which is the bar across the fifth fret of the, the A and the low E, with the seventh fret there on the D. So it's, so it's basically a D power chord with the fifth in the bass. So it's, all right, then we're going to leave the pinky where we're at there, but then play the fourth fret on the A string. So with those two notes together. And then down to the third fret power chord off the A string. So we have that, the low E open power chord so far. The D power chord with the A in the bass. Let's hold that down. And then start back over the second time through. We have the low E power chord to the uh, second fret power chord off the low E string. 
All right, now we jump up to a tritone here off the fourth fret of the A and the fifth fret of the D. Then you're gonna resolve that down to a regular C power chord by just moving this down one fret to the third fret of the A. And we're gonna end this section by jumping down to the first fret power chord off the low E. He does that a few times and quickly changes it to a uh, tritone. So that third fret on the A string goes to the second fret. And then a couple low E hits to start over. So from this second time, second half of it. So F sharp power chord there. If you don't know. All right, so now we are through the keyboard interlude, and um, we are at verse number two. So this is the second verse, completely different riff than the first verse, and it looks like this. All right, so uh, this one's pretty fun to play. We have, uh, first, let's just. A couple of E's open. This is palm muted in the, the first time, three times that you play it. So we have this low E twice, then two zero. Then three and the open E twice. One more time. So that little, that the first note with the, just one E after it, and then the second note with then two E's after it. We're gonna continue that pattern up here. We're gonna play six, then five. So after the six, just one open E. And then after the five, two open E's. So we have this. And then we're just gonna play uh, three, zero, one, zero. So that was different than the two when we came up. So we had this. So you just do that three times. And then just let off the palm muting. And then after that last time I played it, we had this. All right, so this is a palm muted little lick that they end it with. All right, so we have that is zero, two, three, two, zero on the low E. All right. Then just play three, two, zero uh, on the A. So we have this. And then we have five, um, four, two on the D and the G. So we have this so far. And then you're gonna end it by just playing three, two on the low E. All right, then we've get, got probably the uh, most intense pre-chorus in the history. <laughs> Of progress of any music. All right, so let me play this pre-chorus completely different than the previous pre-chorus. Uh, looks like this. So this is luckily has a pattern around it. So as soon as we get the pattern out, it's really just two patterns, uh, but one main pattern that they used this whole way up. So it's basically going to show you the pattern, and then we'll just you know kind of change the notes up the scale as we go up. So uh, let's start here with this. All 
That's the pattern. So we had this. So it's a low E open, then two, three, five on the low E string. Then I'm gonna go to the second fret on the A string, then third, let's play this. Now you're just gonna do a quick little hammer pull between that two and three. So this. Then you're gonna play the fifth fret there on the low E, back to that second fret on the A. So this. Then you're gonna play the third fret and fifth fret on the low E. Almost on here. And then the last four notes of the pattern will be two, and then five, three, two. So you play that bottom note on that string, and then all the way to the top and go down to it. So all together, the whole pattern. All right, so. All right, now, so that's obviously pretty heavily palm meter there, except for the, I'm gonna do a little thing that kind of let off the palm meter. All right, now we're gonna take that same pattern, but we're gonna move it up and we're gonna change the notes on the left hand. So now all these patterns always start with the low E open. So when you hit the low E to start the pattern again, that gives you time to shift up. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing we did here, picking and, 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 and patterning the notes, except now it's gonna be three, five, seven we're gonna use on the low E, and three and five on the A string. So that was the same pattern. Just moved up and played with these different notes. Remember, low E starting it. Then take that exact same thing up, two frets. So that's five, seven, nine on the low E, five, seven on the A. All right, and then this is where we, so we've done that same pattern basically three times. This is where he breaks it up. So we have this. The zero, seven, eight, 10 on the low E. And then come over to the A string and do a quick hammer pull from seven to 10 back to seven. And then play eight on the low E and then open E. Now that's, a, that's an open E that ends that pattern, but also begins it. So we have this. So that's the end of the pattern, that low E. And then we have to hit it again to start the next one. So that's the same. Now it's 0, 8, 10, 12. And, low. and then hammer and pull 9 to 12. And then that 10, 0. So we have this. So it's real important to make sure you see between those two patterns, you hit that open twice because it ended and started the next pattern. Right here. Now we go back to the original pattern using the notes uh, 10, 12, 14 on the low E and uh, 10, 12 on the A. Then move up here to the, ten, the, the 12th fret. Uh, you're losing the notes 12, 14, 15 on the low E, and then 12, 14 on the A. So open E first. All right, move, making our way up here, and then all the way up to the 14th fret. The notes I'm using there are uh, 14, 15, 17 on the low E, and then uh, do that hammer pull off the... Um, uh, 14, 16, and the 8. All right, and then we're going to go back to this pattern. A little quick little pattern that we did two of in the middle there uh, to end it here. And that, those notes are going to be 15, 17, 19 on the low E. And then um, um, that's 16, 19 on the A. 
Mm. And then end it with 17 on low E. The open. Now, what's tricky here is as you do that, throw it to the neck pickup and jump down here and have this really cool. Like, All right, so that's at the seventh fret. Uh, you're gonna play, I, I, I palm muted there. So that's seven, eight on the A to 10 on the G. And then jump up to nine, 10 on the D over to nine on the G. And then play 13, 12 on the B. All right, and then we have this. That's kind of a turn of 12, 13, 15 on the B, and then back 13, 12 over to 14 on the G. And then we have this really killer lick that ends it. Now that's just a pattern. So it's, as soon as you get the pattern down, it's not that, not that extremely difficult. So what is this pattern? Um, we're we're going to play 17, 15, 14 on the D. And then go back up to that 17. Over to um, 14 on the G, 16, 17. So that's the pattern. So if you can get that down, or we're, you're halfway there. All right, so what happens here, you then s slide to, or, or shift into the next, next uh, when you start the next pattern over, which is here. 19, 17, 16, back up to 19, and then play 16, 17, 18 on the B. So that was, and then, so that's basically, it's different notes obviously, but it's the same pattern just across two strings. And then we're gonna shift up now to the 19th fret on the uh, B string and play 19, 18, 17, back up to 19, and then just 17, 18, 19 on the. So, one pattern, two, then. All right, so from there we have, now there are a lot of things going on, kind of like little guitar fills going on. What I'm doing here at the end of this pre-chorus is what he does live. He kind of catches those fills at the end because you want to let this note ring out a little bit. And then he catches it after he lets it ring on these chords right here. So from after you let that ring out, you're going to play now the seventh fret there on the D, ninth on the G, 10 on the B. Then move that down to two frets. And then you're just gonna grab uh, the uh, two, the fifth fret there on the D and the G. Which is a mix up a C chord. And then up here, was nine, nine, seven, nine on D. Over to seven on the G, back to that seven on the D. All right, so that's similar to that. We just have a one note difference when we play that kind of lick again, a um, couple notes. So we go in now to, we finally made it to the chorus. And once again, there's a lot of overdubs going on. There's a, the big power chord hits and then the little clean guitar stuff. Um, and he puts those together kind of like this live.
All right, so we have this A power chord, and then you're gonna play three on the B string, down to five on the G, and let those ring. And then you're gonna hit the A power chord again. But now, make sure this finger's arced so you have the open B string. To that fifth fret on the G. So. so you hit the power chord a third time and play four on the D, five on the G. Then we hit this power chord again, and then you can do the same chords we did earlier at the third fret. And I think he actually might add the third fret on the A string as well, too. Like, kind of make it bigger. So just continue the bar across the A string as well. And move that up. Let's play this. And then, typically live, at least even though there's some more little overdubs things going on, he usually just plays the power chord like, going up at the second half of the course. So that's just that A power chord. And then we have this, second fret of the A, fifth fret on the D. Then move that note on the A string up uh, one fret. Then fifth fret, seven, eight, and one. So it is. All right, then we get to this little uh, transition riff, which is this. So that's just kind of uh, hitting the open A and the D string, and then hammering on the second fret on both of those strings. And that hammers onto a E power chord, and then you just kind of chug around. And then we get to the, I guess, the third verse, so you can kind of consider this a bridge, too. Um, but it's, once again, a completely new riff. Looks like this. That takes us to the uh, uh, another pre-chorus. So we have this: uh, zero, three, five, seven on the low E. Over to five on the A, a string, and then pull off seven to five, and back to that seven. So this. So this. Yeah, that kind of little, little um, kind of ghost notes in there. And then you just do a quick hammer pull uh, from five to seven on the eight, over to seven on the low E. So just... Then a repeat. So that ending there, this time, instead of going, we go, we go, play seven, pull off to five, up to eight on the um, uh, low E. And then, a couple low E uh, hits with that, that power chord we did earlier, that D power chord with A in the bass. So this. Now repeat everything. Except when we got here, instead of going like that, he just does that trill between five and seven on the eight. And then start over. This time, once again, ending on the eighth fret of the low E. And then, and it ends instead of on this chord, it ends at the first fret power chord. And then we're back to the uh, pre-chorus again. And then, just like the one before.
And then it goes back into what is that that keyboard interlude we did, but just the second half of it. So that so it's the second half of a course. And even though it continues that, that's when you can jump up and grab the pre that little ending uh, solo that he did at the last pre-course. So just add it after. The, That's kind of when you want to jump into it. I had to switch to the uh, neck pickup. Now this one's pretty similar, except instead of going, oh, resolving that to that 14th fret there on the uh, G string, it goes. That last note is just now at the third fret on the B. Then that same fast lick, and the same ending pretty much. Except right here, instead of going, he has this. So instead of ending with that note there, just a bend of the 10th fret on the B. And then we're back into the same chorus. Then uh, kind of hit that first fret power chord up a couple times. And then we get to the interlude section. So let me switch back here to this clean section here, to a clean tone here. Uh, basically, interlude section is the intro parts. So the parts we did earlier, that was like about a, a year ago at this point. So we have just the single, kind of simplified version of it with the uh, whammy bar. And then it basically just does that one time and then starts adding a little. So it's shorter than the intro. And then we have a really cool sequence where the chords are getting a little bit more uh, intricate, which is, which is leading us into the solo here. So this section from there, after you've done that little Basically, the second half of this little interlude uh, looks like this. All right, some pretty hairy chords there. So we're going to start with this. All right, so this is the low E open, seventh fret on the A, nine on the D, 11 on the G, and just to make things really perfect, the eighth fret on the B string. So you can pick across the bottom three strings, then strum across the top. So it... And then we have a little bit easier chord. That's just gonna be, um, low E open, 9 on the A, 7 on the D. Open G, 10th fret on the B, open high E. All right, so we have this. And then you're gonna come down here to the open low E, 4th fret of the A string, fifth fret of the D. The open G, uh, seventh fret on the B, open high E. And then a big stretcher here. We're gonna have, he tends to just play this. He, uh, eighth fret there on the low E, 12 on the A, 12 on the D, then pick the 11th fret of the G. So just those four strings, and then strums that chord again. And then we have uh, this series of chords. I'm gonna show you the rhythm in a second. Let's just go through the chords while he's doing this little, this little section. So this is the 10th fret there on the A, 9th on the D, 11 on the G, 12 on the B. So that's the first chord. Now it's pretty close to the second chord, so it's kinda of easy. You basically just move everything up three frets and then also take, when you get there, take the uh, 
that 13th fret there on the uh, A and move it up to the 14th fret. So it's just a little bit different chord. So we have this. Then we come back down to here and the chord changes a little bit and we have a little pinky bar just to make things more fun. We have 10th fret on the A, 11th fret on the uh, D string, 9 on the G, and here he's barring, so it's a little bit, it's a 5 string chord, you're barring the 12th fret of the B and the high E. So we have this, chord first, second, and then back here, and then uh, a little bit easier, 8th fret on the A, 10th fret on the D, and that little pinky bar, 12th fret on the G and the B. All right, so what is the rhythm he's playing? So it's the same with all four chords. We have, you want the three hits, the low E. So it's down, it's, it's like a, a dotted eighth, then do a quick 16th note, so it's, and then an eighth note on the low E, so it's, and the second half of that, the second eighth note there on that, that, that second beat, is an upward strum of that uh, chord. So we have this. And then we just have two groups of three. One, two, three, one, two, three. On that, just on the chord. And then do the same thing on every chord. I didn't know there was a delay on there. So the... And then the same thing on the next chord. And then the last. All right, so pretty, uh, I mean, difficult chords to get on these fingers very easy. All right, so now we get to the fun stuff. Um, we're going to jump into the solo. Let me play through the solo for you real quick, um, and I'll break it down for you uh, phrase by phrase. So here we go. <laughs> So a little bit of WAP action here. So he emulated James Seinfeld earlier, and now he's going to emulate Kirk Hammett. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway, it's, a, it's, a, it's probably one of his shorter solos, but it's just classic, man. So anyway, probably the perfect prog metal solo. I don't know. I can't, you can't really think of anything better. So we have this uh, half step bend release of the seventh fret of the uh, B string over to the fifth fret on the. Uh, B and uh, you get the idea. I'm using a wah pedal. I'll, I'll turn that off. So we have this over the fourth fret on the G, and then same thing, kind of a longer bend. Bend and release there. Half step bend and release at the seventh fret on the B. Over the fifth fret on the B, and then slide down into the fifth fret of the G. All right, and then we have this. So that's a bend and release, a whole step bend and release at the ninth fret on the G. Over to the ninth fret on the uh, high E. And then you're going to slide into this. So that's some of sliding into the tenth fret, and then you're going to do a little gato look. So that's just going to be sliding up to 10, pulling off 9, 7, then 10, 8, 7 on the B, 9, 7, 6 on the G, and then 9, 7, 5 on the um, D string, and over to the 9th fret on the A is where you end it. All right, so, and then we're up here. So we have this half side bend release at the 14th fret on the um, high E string. Over to 12. 
And then a 12th on the B string, which he does a little vibrato right there. Wait a and then another slow bend and release. Down to 14, 12, to 13, 14, 12, 13 on the B. And then we have this cool lick. So that's a, little, a six note lick. We're gonna play 16, 12 on the B string twice. Just strict alternate picking over to 14 on the B and then back to that 12 on the high E. So that's the pattern. So you do it twice there. And then move up the uh, pinky up to the 17th fret. Everything else stays the same. And then back to the previous at the 16th fret. So we have the pattern basically done four times, except you just move the, high, the pinky up to the 17th fret the third time through. So it's All right. Now this next lick is, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to pick up, but if you, if you listen to it closely, he's actually doing the same pattern twice, um, uh, and as long and then just throughout the scale. Um, so with the wah pedal, with it, it's kind of hard to pick out. But um, so let me show you what this pattern is. So that's the pattern. So uh, meaning the pattern is just kind of this the, the order of the notes along the string. So uh, and the number of notes they are and how he plays it. So it's just so you're gonna start here at the 14th fret there on the high E. Hammer on 15, pull back off the 14, go over to 12. Then over to the 15th fret there on the on the B. So you basically you, you see how you started with the note in the middle there. And then you play 15, 13, 12. Play 15, pull off to the other two, and slide down to the 10th fret. So the... Then you're gonna hammer on 12, 13, pull back off to, uh, down to 12 and 10. So the... And then you're gonna go over to the G string, and play 12, pull off to 9, pull off to 11, pull off to 9. So that's the end of the lick. So it, I'm sorry, right there, after this, slide down to 8. So right this. And then you basically start the same lick we did here. But you do it with this different note tone. All right, so we're gonna now start it, we're here at the eight, right? So now we're gonna start nine, hammer 11, pull off to nine, pull off to eight. Over to 10 on the um, D string, pull off nine, seven, slide down to five. It does the same as this. Right? Same pattern. And then from here, the hammering back to seven and nine, pull back off. It's like this. We did there. So that's it. And then you're gonna come down here and play. Nine, pull up to seven and six, and then slide into the ninth fret there with some vibrato on the G string. Like I said, you can hear a lot of stuff going on there, but he usually catches it right here. So that's just. So after he's playing that ring, he catches it. Low E open, and then 9 on the low E, 9, 10 on the A. Then come down here, we have 3 on the low E, and 5 on the um, A. 
And then you're going to hold a bar here with your pinky with the cross the seventh fret of the D and the G. Pick that and slide up to nine and back down. And then jump up here. We're going to, at the end of the solo here, the eighth fret of the A string and the tenth fret of the D. Down to the ninth fret of that D while keeping the eight on the A. And then eight on the A again, but this time seven on the D. And end it all with that uh, the G power chord there. So that that we did earlier. And then we're back to the chorus again. Now this chorus is a little bit different. Um, so it's the same the first we did here before. So they go through the chorus like normal. And but then they do kind of this kind of extended chorus here, which um, we have this right here with this. All right, so it's kind of a, kind of a variation of that main riff at the beginning of the song. So just so this is the second time the kind of the second time through that last chorus. Uh, so you're doing that the A power chord hitting those fists, and then you're playing this like seven on the D and the G down to five. Kind of same rhythm we did earlier, but it was obviously an E. And then these next little melody, uh, kind of uh, double stops. We have fifth on the D, four on the G. So you play that, then just move that fifth fret on the G up to, uh, up to the fifth fret on the G. So it is. And then uh, the third grouping is the fourth fret on the D and the G, and then move up to that fifth fret on the G again while keeping that four on the D again. And that same little thing from there, you just pick up. All right, and then it's that same kind of ending that we usually have the course, but over that section, we have those kind of unison bends, look like this. So that's uh, the unison bend here, fifth fret on the high E and the eighth fret on the B, and you're gonna bend up that A until they match. So you're just gonna do that at the fifth fret, then seven and eight, then 10, 12, 13, and then back down to six a couple times. All right, and then we get to the outro section, uh, which has got some really cool stuff in it. It sounds like this. So that's the first section of the outro. So it's pretty simple here. There's a hammer in uh, zero, um, two on the off the open A and D there, hammering onto that E power chord that we did before. And then you go to this the big E power chord up here with all the open strings. You have a quick little speed burst on the low E. And then you sum the chord. After you've done that a couple times, we now do a variation of this. All right, so that's starting with that hammer on. So you do that rhythm, 
kind of really kind of lock into that rhythm. And then you're gonna hit the power, the second fret of the A and the D and slide it up to the third fret. And then the next time, slide from three to four. And then four to five for this one. And then you're going to end that here with this, the bar across the third fret of the A and the low E, and the fifth fret on the D, down to the first fret. And again, a little bit different timing the second time around. All right, then we start kind of accenting that by doing this. All right, so I'm gonna do that a couple of times. So that's starting with this, that little hammer on to the E power chord. Then jump up, do that quick little speed burst and hit its octave of that power chord, the E power chord up here. And then you go back down and slide into that F power chord here, which is to slide the two to three. And then it hit its octave. And then slide three to four. And hit its octave at the ninth fret, F sharp power chord. Show you this. Now here, you can, when you slide four to five, instead of going up and grabbing its octave shape, he has this very interesting little look there. So it's heavily palm muted, hard to hear on the recording, but pretty disjointed. So we have um, zero three on the um, uh, on the A string, and then play two five on the D, and then play. Zero one on the A, so it is, and then two on the D, so it is, and then end it three one on the low E, and then go back, so it is. All right, so after you've done that two times, we're gonna get the very end of the song here. It looks like he's gonna start the same riff again, but he has this little ending. So that is just basically started going up and grabbing a talk to, and then that little, they do a little burst and just grab the F, F power chord. and then just end it with a couple of uh, open E power chords. Oh, we are done. So if you got this far with me, I really appreciate it. I know this song is an epic monster of the progressive rock metal, um, but if you're into that, you need to know this song. It has got some really, really cool stuff in it. Just anything you can imagine from killer riffs to killer solos to intricate chords and um, it just it's laid out just brilliantly. So hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll see you guys again soon for guitarlessons365.com.